Welcome back. Now in our Patriot Report, imagine serving your country, going off to war, killing the enemy, and then upon returning home being charged with a war crime. Believe it or not, it's a scenario that many of our brave troops are still facing today, even though both the Iraq and Afghanistan wars are now over. And because it's the holiday season, I wanted to feature more charities on the program. And with that in mind, I want to tell you about a citizen-funded and veteran-run nonprofit group. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. It's called United American Patriots. These folks are working tirelessly to defend our brave men and women who have sacrificed it all for us. United American Patriots supports our troops who are more often than not wrongfully accused of committing war crimes. Yes, there is a few times you get a soldier who goes beyond what they should be doing and does something criminal. But in many cases, you have bureaucrats a lot of times wanting to make a name for themselves or a higher up in the Pentagon who then charges, say, a E1, E2, E3, E4, someone enlisted for you veterans out there with something that makes no sense. Because let's face it, war is hell. Now, the nonprofit group supports these brave men and women through legal representation, financial support, and also it helps to try and reintegrate them into society once they're found innocent. And seeing that Christmas is just days away, I also wanted to highlight this charity because they're actually helping to give back to kids this holiday season by partnering with Toys for Tots. To learn more about this amazing nonprofit, I want to welcome now, for the first time, retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel David Bull, as he's known, Gerfine to the program. Uh, Bull, thanks for coming on. Appreciate what you're doing. Uh, you're the CEO, you're the top dog over at this charity, and uh, I forget who brought it to my attention, but when I saw you guys were doing Toys for Tots, plus just what you're doing for our brave, brave folks who have served this nation, and we've heard so many horror stories about folks, especially in the Obama administration, who were brought up on charges that were just <clears throat> hogwash. I don't know what else to call them. Um, and I've seen that your group goes out there and helps these men and women get exonerated. So my hat's off to you. A tip my hat to you. Uh, thanks for coming on the program, Bull. How are you? Outstanding, and thank you so much for having me on here. It's uh, it's a real honor and a pleasure, and especially this time of year. We've got uh, a lot of people focusing on what needs to be done to uh, take care of those who are in need right now, and uh, certainly our warriors are, uh, are a group that should always be looked after. Yeah, yeah, let's look at it this way. If we didn't have them defending us, you and I wouldn't be sitting here on television talking about any of this. We wouldn't be celebrating Christmas in a couple days. Uh, let's be real. They are the reason uh, that we're able to do everything that we're able to do in this country. And thank you, by the way, for your service. I know you put in a few as a jarhead. So thank you, Colonel. I appreciate that. Uh, talk to me about how this charity got started. How long have you guys been in business? Yeah, so we've been around for over 16 years now, and it was founded by a uh, Vietnam vet, Marine, a sniper, warrior, highly decorated, silver star, bronze star. And uh, uh, this gentleman, he, he saw the Haditha and the Hamdaniya Marines being walked around in shackles and uh, congressmen calling them murderers before they had even been brought to trial. And uh, we saw that, you know, he saw this as unlawful command influence, that everybody deserves a presumption of innocence, especially when the enemy is accusing you of a crime. And so uh, he started, he actually mortgaged his, uh, his home and uh, brought this uh, whole organization into reality. And it's grown ever since. We've had uh, hundreds of thousands of supporters across the nation who have come in and just basically said, you know, give our, give our warriors the same rights that they're out there fighting for on our behalf and give them an, uh, an honest trial. Like we just had a trial yesterday where, uh, unbelievable, where the, the defense was talking about uh, don't give these guys a fair trial because it could impact your career. And uh, that whole case may get thrown out. That's the MARSOC 3. That's three Marine Raiders that we're uh, supporting right now. So it's, it's an ongoing problem, and it's one of those things where you would expect more from those who are actually uh, trying to bring to light what is right and what's fair for those warriors who are selflessly serving on our behalf. Yeah, you know, I, um, I have a really close friend who was brought up on charges, bogus. Um, been trying to help him during the Trump administration get a pardon on what happened to him. I probably didn't know about your group uh, in his case, but I've looked at over and over again and what he did in my book. And again, 
I'll point this out because I don't want anybody ever accusing me of stolen valor. I served my years in the Air Force, never saw combat, but many friends that I know did. And when I heard my friend Roger's story about what happened to him and how someone was just trying to make a name for themselves and then brought up these trumped up charges against him and then he gets kicked out of the military and, you know, it affected his civilian life for, for the last decade or so, it, it just, <clears throat> it gets in under my skin. And I think more than not, Colonel, and, and you probably know better than I, this happens a lot, more than the American people realize, right? Where, where troops come home and they're brought up on these charges, well, you murdered that person. You didn't need to shoot them. Again, as I said in the intro, war is hell. You send an 18-year-old to war, right, two, three deployments, and expect them to not engage, less engaged, and be this perfect soldier who doesn't, I mean, the expectations oh, oh, are ridiculous by bureaucrats. Yeah, and, and, and that's the challenge is that, you know, our, our warriors are by and large doing the right thing and they should be given the presumption of innocence. And especially when the enemy is making the accusations, we've got warriors sitting in prison right now. One of them was accused of killing 16 civilians. And when I went and talked to him, he said, I didn't kill 16, I killed 20. And some of them were enemy combatants. But our government chose not to listen to what our warrior said. He actually talked, He list, they listened to the Taliban. When we actually went out to do a, an investigation, nobody ever saw the bodies. Everybody took the word of the Taliban. And the Taliban gave the evidence and the, the United States government flew in Taliban to testify against this warrior who's now sitting in prison for life. And so everybody's story they heard from President Obama was, hey, we're gonna prosecute this case aggressively. It's like, hold on a second. Our job is to investigate the case aggressively, yeah. not prosecute. No, I remember and that's all we heard. Secretary, yeah, yeah, you heard Secretary of Defense came out and said, the death penalty is on the table. So they, they really pressured this kid. It was a horrible situation. Staff Sergeant, uh, Bob Bales, he's still sitting in prison. His wife has moved closer to the prison so that he could still be a great father to his two children. He does homework with them every day. He's an amazing individual. You got Staff Sergeant Calvin Gibbs wasn't even in the area when supposedly he was accused of committing murder. But the-, Bill, the, can the I, I don't mean to interrupt. Can I ask you something real quick? Because we're short yes, on sir. time and I, and I want people to understand this. Are majority of the soldiers that you're defending and helping, are they- cases that are held over from the Obama administration? And did you see newer ones this past year during the Biden administration? Because I have a feeling that during those four years of Trump, we didn't have a big overzealous amount of bureaucrats trying to find guilt with our heroes. I could be no, wrong. For the most part, for the most part, we didn't. And President Trump, we actually were able to get four pardons from President Trump, who actually got cases dropped from warriors. Uh, but the one case that just recently came in under the Biden administration is we have warriors actually in Syria right now. Right. And the Syrians actually engaged some of our U.S. troops. And this warrior actually exposed himself to hostile engagement and was put in for a bronze star by his immediate superior who was there on location. And all of a sudden, somebody put on YouTube or, or TikTok or who knows what, some video and said, oh, my God, look, the Americans are here killing our righteous Syrian citizens, which was not the case. But our government immediately uh, presumed guilt and wants uh, Sergeant First Class Nickerson to spend time in prison. And we're fighting to keep him out. And we are trying to get congressional support to drop this case because our warriors have a right to self-defense, regardless of who shoots at them. And so uh, yeah, and he's and an amazing. Also, Bull, also, Bull, don't forget. Most of these bureaucrats bringing them up on trumped up charges have never served one frickin' day in uniform, okay? Like you and I. So anyway, um, they're wrapping me up. I know you and I would be able to talk forever on this subject because this, again, is something Absolutely. that just really gets me hot under the collar when I hear about our brave troops being strung up and hung out to dry by bureaucrats. Um, but I want to pivot real fast. You're a Marine. Marines have been doing this, I read, since 1947, the Toys for True. Tots Drive. Is that correct? 47. Absolutely. That is correct. And it's uh, it's a wonderful charity, Toys for Tots, where the Marines, uh, usually led by the Marine Corps Reserve, who's out there in the public, uh, they just request that you come by, drop a, an unwrapped or a uh, unwrapped uh, 
unpackaged toy of new toy in their bin, or you can submit uh, funding and they'll go out and purchase toys and they give hope and joy to children. And especially when you see some Marine in their dress blues showing up with a new toy, uh, these kids just love it. So it's an amazing program. And uh, through our organization, UAP.org, we've been accepting, I think we've uh, had about $13,000 donated towards the cause so far. And uh, anybody else who wants to donate any sorts of gifts, you'll usually see the, you, you'll see the Marines out there with their boxes, or you'll be able to uh, actually just go to a reserve unit anywhere near where you are and be able to drop off a gift. But if it's easier just to donate funding, uh, certainly 100% of the funding that comes in for Toys for Tots, we give that directly right over to Toys for Tots. We don't take a dime from that. So uh, great. It's, it's great to partner with them. Lieutenant Colonel, retired Marine David Bull. Gervine, thank you for what you're doing with the UAP organization, and thanks for partnering up with Toys for Tots during this holiday season. We know there's a lot of underprivileged kids out there that would love to have at least just one thing under the tree. So thanks for everything Absolutely. you're doing for our troops and the kids, Bull. God bless you. Merry Christmas, and thank you for your service. God bless you. Merry Christmas, and thank you to everybody who's supporting us and our warriors. God bless you all. You take care.